Good morning. Uh oh, wrong song. Good morning, Jesus people. Good to see all y'all this morning. Y'all stand up and worship with us this morning. It's good to be alive this morning, isn't it? Amen. Better to be alive in Jesus. Good morning. You may be seated. want to welcome you to Pleasant Hill. So glad to see each and every one of you today as we come together to celebrate. We're going to have a lot of fun together today, and I'm just excited about what God is doing in this place. Amen? Amen. God is on the move, and I'm glad to be walking right behind him. So thank you for being here today. want to welcome our guests that are joining us online this morning also, and we look forward to seeing you right here very, very soon. And again, we're just praising God for his blessing upon this church family and on our community, and we're just looking with expectation for the great things that God is going to continue 
to do. Uh, a couple of things we do want you to be mindful of that are up and coming very quickly. This afternoon at 5 p.m., this afternoon at 5 p.m., we're going to have Smart Sanctuary, kind of like the old Safe Sanctuary training. And if you have any inkling of being a part of or connected with uh, children or youth ministry in the days to come, and, and I'm real excited to share with you, and we're going to be uh, doing that here in the next two or three weeks about some great new things that are going to just be bursting forth in our, in our children and then our youth program. So we're excited about what God's got in store for that as well, for you and for me. But for us to, uh, to f- effectively and for us to wisely be good stewards of the greatest blessing and gift that God has given us, our children, our young people, uh, we want to make sure uh, that we're doing our very best to take care to give them our very best. And so we're inviting you to be a part of that Smart Sanctuary training. And uh, again, it's going to be required. It is a requirement here at this church. Uh, If you're going to be in ministry in any way with our young people, and that also means if you're going to be attending events, some of you might be baking a cookie or or grilling a hamburger or serving a pizza or, or, or counseling a young person. There's so many different things. Um, we encourage you, I'd love the whole church to, to come and be a part of this training uh, because we're all ministering to our young people. That's our calling. It's not just your pastor. It's not just Miss Jennifer and it's not Miss Amanda alone. Uh, it's all of us we're called to serve and to train up our young people to give them the best opportunity to be what God wants them to be. Be a part of that training. There's going to be future opportunity, but this is going to be the first and the best, so don't miss it. And again, speaking of our, of our children, uh, here in just a few weeks, put it on your calendar for April the 1st at 10 a.m. And uh, you're going to have to get here early because I'm going to bring a big basket. All right? We're going to be chasing around and looking and running and playing and finding some Easter eggs. All right? All right, and I heard there's some really interesting ones going to be out there. So uh, we want to make sure to invite all our community, our friends, to come out and be a part of that on April the 1st at 10 o'clock. And again, we're inviting you to be a part of that as well. Uh, And we're also going to give you an opportunity. Do you feel responsibility coming on? We're going to give you an opportunity uh, next Sunday, if you would, uh, to bring any candy or eggs um, to to be a part of that and bring it uh, no later than... uh, March the 26th. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited this morning. It's always great to, to launch into new things. Amen. That means we're alive. It means God's up to something. As we see new things being birthed. New things being established. As we see men and women and boys and girls coming into the family of God. And we see, we see growth in the kingdom of God. That means we're alive. Amen. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. In just a moment, uh, we're going to continue in our worship. And before we do, um, I want to invite, if you would, to stand with me right where you are. Would you stand with me this morning? I do want to remind you today, we're going to pray in just a second, but I do want to remind you today that, uh, uh, again, if the Lord's laid that on your heart or you've brought that, which is uh, that which is that portion that God has entrusted to you to, to give today, there is opportunity up here along the altar rail, either during or after the service, to, uh, to give as the Lord uh, encourages you to do. This morning, uh, right after we pray, we're going to greet one another. And as we do that, uh, if there's anyone, I've had a couple people contact, if there's anyone that is interested in um, joining the church today, anyone that's interested in joining uh, the church today, if you would either see me or get word to me, I'm going to be right over in this area, kind of towards the that American flag there, uh, right after, while we're meeting and greeting, if you would, just for just a moment, and come see me for just a second today. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and glory in this place. Lord, we're not here because of a building. We're here because of a people. Lord, we're not here because of a church name. We're here because you're alive in this community. And, Lord, we're not here because of any other personality save the name of Jesus. And so, Lord Jesus, today we give you praise. We lift up your name and we thank you. 
We thank you for giving your life so that ours might be saved. Lead us in our worship today, we pray. Lead us in our fellowship. And may the name of Jesus be lifted high. In Jesus' name, amen. Greet one another in the Lord this morning. Test, test. Hello. I need you to let me speak a minute. <laughs> We're going to try something new this morning. We're going to sing Still Rolling Stones, and we need your help. So when I say rise up, I need y'all to repeat back to me, rise up. So if I say rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Rise up. Do it again, do it again. All right, I know y'all are talking. If y'all talk, if y'all sing rise up as loud as you're talking right now, we'll be rocking this house. Yeah. So, so rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Y'all got this. Okay, y'all ready? Out of the shadows, bound for the gallows, a dead man walking to love can't call in. So rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Six feet under, I thought it was over. An answer to prayer, the voice of a savior. So rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. And all at once, I came alive. This beating heart, these open eyes. 
And now that you saved me, I sing because you gave me a song of revival. They put it on vinyl. So rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. I once was blinded, but now I see it. I thought about the power, and now I believe it. So rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. And I that I was too far gone for everything I've done wrong I'm the one that dug this grave but you call my name you call my name I thought that I was too far gone for everything I've done wrong I'm the one that dug this grave, but you call my name, you call my name, and all at once. You're still rolling stones, just you're rolling, rolling. You're still rolling stones. Yeah, y'all did good on that. Y'all did good on that. speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power your name is healing, your name is light. And break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety Till every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name Stronghold shine through the shadows, 
Burn like a fire. Sing that all again. Because your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shine. Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus oh. Oh, that was good. Thank you, praise team. We just, uh, we're so blessed to have you. So blessed that you're here with us and, and serving the Lord with all you do each week. And thank you for leading us to that place of grace this morning. Now, some of you know I'm from the, the great, don't hold this against me, I'm from the, the great state of Mississippi where we finished last in everything. Amen? Amen. But hey, there's a promise in that that I cling to, and I've clung to my whole life. 
the last will be first, amen. <laughs> so so uh, most of you know that, but uh, I, I remember a story uh, several years back uh, in Mississippi, one of the highway patrolmen, it was several years back, it, um, it, there was a, a car uh, with a couple of individuals that were speeding down the road, and he, and he pulled them over, and as he walked up to the driver's side, you know, the standard thing, then the window came down, and and, uh, you know, the first question that's always asked, oh, you know, what I do wrong, right, you know? And so without saying a word, the highway patrolman just reached in and just slapped the driver. I mean, right across the face, just, just slapped him. And he said, why'd you do that? He said, well, you're supposed to have your driver's license, proof of insurance, registration, all that handed to me. You didn't have it ready, so you just get what you asked for. Very quickly, he provided the information, the, did the transaction, was just about ready to go. But when the highway patrolman came back, he walked right back up and walked over to the passenger side, tapped on the window. And when the window came down, he just slapped the passenger right across the face. He said, what in the world did you do that for? I wasn't even driving. <laughs> he said, yes, but here in the great state of Mississippi, we make dreams come true. And he says, I know when you got two miles down the road, you're going to say, I wish he would have tried that with me. Right? Right? Oh, my goodness. You know, it's kind of funny, some of the things as we, that we run into and encounters, the way we react and, and treat one another, and we go through all kinds of things together. And I don't know, God has a sense of humor. I know that he does. Because we have this thing that, that when it calls about human beings and we talk about love, you know, we're getting the spring season, right? You know, we talk about love. We say that opposites, oh, come on, you guys got to help me out a little bit better than that this morning. Opposites, <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. There's always one, amen. There's always. And so you never know what you're going to get. But opposites attract, it seems like, and I know in, 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 in my home, Ah, uh, Julie likes cold, I like hot. You know, it's kind of that way in almost every single thing. She stays up late, I get up early. You know what I mean? It's just like that in almost every single way. And, and, and so our life is not about agreement, it's more about survival, you know. I mean, it's, 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 about, uh, it's about trying to struggle together to come up with a place somewhere in the middle where we can coexist. Um. And, and, you know, churches are a lot like that, too, if you notice. Amen. They tell a story about a church that's in South Louisiana, and if you go by there, it just stands out. I mean, it just stands out like you would not believe. Because half of the church likes red and half of the church likes green. And I saw a picture of the church online. I didn't believe it. Half of the roof is red. Half of the roof is green because they couldn't agree. We're coming together today to celebrate in the church life the reality that we need one another. Amen. Because if it weren't for, for Julie, I'd miss half the life going to bed early. And I'd get up and do things before anyone else was awake. And, and it would be the opposite of way around with her. God has put us together. So that every part of our family is blessed. I like living in the moment and having experiences. She's nostalgic. She loves yesterday. You know what I mean? And both matter. Both matter. We need one another in the family of God. We need one another in the family of God. It's okay that you look at things a little differently than me. long as we know that there is but one Lord. Amen? Amen. Can we agree on that? There is but one Lord, and his name is Jesus. Can we agree on that this morning? Amen. Am I in the right place? Can we agree on that this morning? Amen. Amen. Okay. There is but one Lord. We get that right. Everything else takes care of itself. Because we're not here to worship our ideas. We're here to worship the greatest idea, the truth of Jesus, that one died for all, and in him all can live. Amen. That's the blessing, the joy of the family of God coming together as one.
In the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 4, the Bible says this, For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ. And individually members of one another. You want to be scared this morning? Look around the room. We belong to each other. <laughs> some of you are crying and some of you are smiling. Amen. Amen. We belong to each other. In, in Christ Jesus, we are one. That's the crazy math of the body of Christ. One plus one equals one. In Jesus, we are one in the kingdom of God. Just very quickly this morning, I want to share with you a couple of verses about some passages that talk about being together in the family of God. I call it the love one another's. I'm just going to share with you a few because there's a lot of them. I encourage you to take your Bibles throughout the week and, and either to Google or, or, to, or to get in the back in the concordances or to search it up and find the love one another's in the Bible because it's full of them. But there's more than just love one another. The Bible says a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. Did you hear that? As I have loved you. How do we love one another? As Christ loved us. What did he do? He gave it all. That you also love one another. And by this, all will know that you're my disciples. And so it's not just something we say, is it? It's something that other people can see. If we love one another, it changes our behavior. Amen? By this, all will know that you're to my disciples if you have love. For one another. God calls us to love one another. Not only that, we see in the book of, of Ephesians in chapter 4, verse 32, and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. We have to forgive one another in the body of Christ. Forgive one another. That means we have to look past some stuff. Amen? Anybody ever get up on the wrong side of the bed? Huh? Anybody ever have one of those moments that you wish you could take back? Is it just me? I need Jesus. And I think you do too. And in that we're confessing that we need one to forgive us, to restore us, and to set us on a path that is straight. But we need to be gracious with our neighbor too. Amen? Because they need the same Jesus we do. Forgive one another. And, what, and whenever you stand praying, the Bible says, it affects your prayer life. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. That your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. How many of you believe Jesus answers prayer? Looking around this room, I see some answers to prayer this morning. But did you know that if you have unforgiveness in your heart, your first obligation, your first thing to do before you bow a knee is to move and to go and to find that person and forgive the one who has wronged you. Because you're about to communicate with the one that you've wronged. Who's forgiven you first. Forgive one another. The Bible says to comfort one another. I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, those who have passed away, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Therefore, do what? Comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another. What do we do? We are called to bring, inspire hope in one another's lives. How many of you know that person when they come into the room, you just, you just kind of, oh boy, here it comes. You're afraid. You don't want to ask them how they're doing, amen? Because you're going to need a minute, and they're about to tell you, huh? How many of you know that, if you don't know that person, we love you anyway, amen, amen, you know? Uh, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? We need to be those people that inspire hope. Yes, today may be going south in a hurry. It may be going to the proverbial place no one else wants to go. 
But praise God, life doesn't end today, amen? It's not about just what is set before us. It's not about what we've been through in the past. Praise God, it is about where we are going. Comfort one another with these words. <clears throat> the book of Hebrews chapter 3 says this. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Man, I want to preach there for just a moment. But, I'm, but encourage one another daily. Encourage one another daily. As long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. My friends, we are on a path that is straight, that is narrow, that leads to life everlasting. But we need a little help. We need a little help. How many of you like to bowl? Yeah, me either. Not any good at it. And you know, when I go bowling, if I do, they want to put up those little, those little kitty lane things, you know what I'm talking about? You know, that kind of keep you between the lines, you know? It's like some of you driving, you need guardrails on both sides of the road, huh? The rest of us know you. We've seen the scars on your car, huh? You know, I mean, and that's what, that's what I, I need that in my life. We're to be that for one another, amen? So go ahead and hurt my feelings if you love me. Because at the end of the day, I want to make it home. And I want you to make it home. Encourage one another. Teach, admonish, correct. The Bible says to confess your sins to one another. We need one another to make it home. 1 Peter chapter 3 says, Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you are called to this, that you may inherit the blessing. Having compassion for one another. In those moments when we're not having our best day, take a step back. Look at your neighbor and understand, it's not always easy. And that angry response may be coming from a hurt heart, huh? Amen? Having compassion for one another. How many of you in here believe you're God? We believe in God, amen? But we know that we're not Him, huh? Let God the opportunity to convict because he's the only one who can save. Amen? Have compassion with one another. Romans chapter 12 says this, Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things but associate with the humble. That one's not as hard for me. Uh, do not be wise in your own opinions. My thoughts aren't that lofty anyway. Be of the same mind towards one another. What is it saying? Have respect for one another. Do not esteem yourself to be all that. I had someone a long time ago, I was fretting over something. It was bothering me a whole lot in my life. And he just said, hey, Chris, don't take yourself so seriously. No one else does. <laughs> huh? Amen. Amen. Don't take yourself so seriously. You're not the only one. Respect those around you. Esteem them more highly than yourself. Choose them first. And that's what this verse says in Romans 12, 9. Love must be sincere. I don't know about you, but I want to live in a world that's real, amen? Amen. And I want to love a love that's real. And I believe you do too. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another and love. Honor one another above yourselves. That means choose one another first. That means give somebody else the best seat at the table, huh? Amen? 
That means be patient with one another. Wait on someone who is, who is struggling and wait on someone who is tarrying with the Lord. Give each other the best spot. There won't ever be a clergy parking spot in this parking lot. If you put one, I'll tear it up. We love our guests and our friends. We give them the best spots, amen? We give them the best spots. Respect one another and honor one another. God loved us first before we loved him. And he said, love one another like I've loved you. Love first. Because God's already loved you. Amen. Amen. God's bringing us together. And my friends, some of us are different. Some of you are real different. Amen. He's bringing us together. We have different thoughts and different ideas, but he's called us together to be one because we love Jesus first and we put one another above ourselves so that God be glorified and so the world can see that we're his disciples because they know us by our love. I'm going to invite you to Stand with me this morning. The worship team's going to come. Before we do anything else, before we do anything else today, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you don't know the happiness of sins forgiven and the hope of a life everlasting with the Lord Jesus Christ, that your tomorrow is taken care of, that your today is all right in his eyes, then you need Jesus today. If that's your hope, you need him because he'll provide that for you. And we encourage you today, you respond to the Lord. If the Lord's speaking to your heart today and you need Jesus in your life, it's not about anybody else, just about you. This, let the Lord speak to you in your heart this morning. Draw that imaginary circle around you and say, Lord, fill this circle with your truth and help me to know. Help me to know Jesus, that he is who he says he is. Jesus, help me to trust you, to know that you died with me on your mind, that my sins would be forgiven. That my place in the kingdom of God would be secured. That my place in the family of God would be realized. And that my place in the kingdom, the eternal kingdom of God would be established. Spirit of God, speak to me the truth of your word. That today I might know. If that's your prayer this morning, you respond to the Lord today. If you need to come and pray, you come and pray. If you need to grab someone beside you, have them pray with you, they'll be glad to do that today. You trust Jesus with your life. He's the only one. He's the only way. And this morning, if there is anything between you and another brother or sister in this fellowship today, today is where it stops. Amen. Today is where it stops. Because we got kingdom business to do, you see. We got boys and girls and men and women that need Jesus in their lives. We've got families that need restored. We've got bodies that need healed. We've got spirits that need to be reclaimed, you see. Nothing's more important. Nothing's more important. You respond as the Lord speaks to you today. At the conclusion of this song, I'm going to be right down front. And I'm going to invite anyone, anyone at all, if, if you'd like to join the church today. We've had several speak to me this morning. If you're a part of the body of Christ, the kingdom of God, you've confessed your sins, he's forgiven you. And you want this to be your home. I'm going to invite you to join me around this altar. We're going to, we're going to, confess, our, we're going to confess our truth in Jesus before the congregation. And we're going to make promise to God in this group that we'll honor him. So you'll, invite, you'll, you'll just respond at the conclusion of this song right here in the front. You respond as the Lord leads today. Turn 
joining the family.